All right, time to go over the how we're going to mount this. This is what I came up with so far. Um, encourage feedback on this. Uh, a couple of the questions I have is I got the full size thing here, 73 by 83, but this doesn't answer the question. Is that the actual real sizes of the actual wall? Or is this just what we would like it to be? Or what, um, I know it says real deal base measurements, but are we sure that it's 73 exact on top and bottom? Is it 73 and a quarter and it's 72 and seven eighths or does it bulge in the middle? And it says 83 here, so I need to know, are we, do I make it 82 and three quarters to make sure we have a little room or are we building this thing to these dimensions knowing that's what we have? So I went ahead and built it to these dimensions because that's what you have. Um, but we have zero room for any expansion or contraction. We can't make things fudge or we can't expand or contract, you know, the acrylic or anything like that. So the only room we have is for the side skirt. We have a tiny bit of room here, but otherwise it has to be perfect. So if we know for a fact that the actual structural sizes, we went out and put a tape measure and it's 73 exact all the way down, then fine. But I just need to know for clarification how much play we want built into this thing. That being said, um, this is kind of built to those exact measurements. So, um, so what we're going to do is make a, a make like a frame piece that goes on the wall first. The purple and green are both 090 pieces, separate pieces um, that will be all put together. So you have basically a one piece bent piece of aluminum 090 that goes all the way across like sort of a tray system that'll have a channel on both sides. That's this piece here. And that will then be lordsed and we can put flat rivets on the back to just sort of give it some extra love. Um, we'll have three inch by 73 inch long pieces of basically channel on both sides that will be flat in the middle that allows it to lords, but you'll get these kind of channel returns here on both sides that'll give it some structure and some strength. That will be where the mounting structure will go. So we won't put any screws or have any sort of hardware visible in the back here. So we have this 36 inch um, stretch that's not gonna have any sort of fastening unless we have to, but, and you think we won't see the hardware there, but it will cast shadows when you have the LEDs. So, and from there you just build it out. So what you do is just put this frame up first onto the wall like that. That's the top view. Uh, the frame will be to the wall. That's this, that's the, the elevation view here. So this gives us the ability to maybe hit the studs on the corners here. And this would be whether there's a strap or I don't know, whatever, um, the method of putting that there. But so basically we'll have two mounting points on each of these, um, on this side and this side. And then again, that keeps mounting out of the center here. So once the frame is on the wall, um, the LEDs will run in this little track here. The LEDs then, you know, they can wire it up. So if you were looking at it from the elevation side view here, again, this would be the side view of the track. So it would just mount directly to the wall. And then this would be power out for the LEDs to go out. And then we can get that all kind of lined up. And then from there, the acrylic, which has been grooved, will then mount, just kind of sit against that. So now it's kind of just loose hanging there. So same thing here. This will just go on top of that track. At which point you come in with retainers. So we have our retainers here. This is, again, the top view of what the retainers will do. So they'll slide in. We'll have little number 10s. They'll miss the LEDs. And that will trap the acrylic to the frame. So that's from the top there. And so, again, from the side. They'll come in from the side. 
and that'll allow us to have access. Well, they'll come in from the front because I know we can't come in from the side, but that will allow access for impact wrenches, whatever they want to use for attaching that. Uh, same thing there. So just like that. So now our, our track will be, have captured that. And again, you can run your wires and do whatever you need to do. Then I figured the best thing to do would be to have some sort of a friction. Here, I'll catch this side up too, just so it's all matching. So you'll bring this in from the side view there. That's what it looks like. You'll just put it up against the frame and then your the track will capture it. Looks like we got off a little bit. Anyway, so that's the track. Oh, yeah, no, it goes there. Captures the groove, that's right. All right, so there we go. So the track will capture it, put the screws in all the way down the side, and then your, here's your power out. It'll have a little a little guy there to, to allow for the power to go out. I'm assuming it goes to the top. We're going to go to the ceiling. Um, <clears throat> and then once that's on, then we know that we can only come in from the front for the two side skirts. Uh, those are 12 inches, as you said in your in your um, side view there, 12 inch return. Um, so what you'll do is just bring those forward, slide them in. I figured the best thing we could do for this to keep it the strongest um, if double stick tape isn't going to work if we have to get back in there and keep taking it off and putting it on. Um, I thought maybe a little more control and a little more strength and removability would be to go with a friction um, closure where these channels will slide into each other and they can be adjusted at the, in the field to where they can grip more or less. With four of them, gripping each one um, the amount of like inconsistency between grabbing will will cause these to really grab each other probably fairly strongly if not too strong um, but we can bring those in from the front and they'll just slide in and capture each other now I have 0.02 normally in the shop I do a 0.01 um, which is pretty pretty tight so if we do a 0.02, plus you can kind of kind of bend these and customize them in the field to see how well it grabs. So you can sort of dial it in if you want. Um, and the way I have it drawn here is, since you're saying 73, I just have a 30 second, but we, this would be the only way we could get a little bit of play. So I need advice and kind of input on that to see how much play we want for this gap because this is going to be the gap for our acrylic and how accurate we are trying to hit that so again so that would be how these come in they'll just uh you know like again we'll just use a friction where they'll this 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 um channel will clamp over the other channel. So this is like a side view here. So just like that, it'll still clamp over. Um, again, how accurate you want that to be, um, will be, you can kind of dial that in based on how much clamping you want you can kind of maybe you know hit these up with a little bit of a hammer kind of knock these down but um, from what I found if you know we overcook this in the break a little bit this will be already grabbing it might actually be too hard to put on at one point so with just a little bit of finessing um, these guys should pinch each other pretty well and should hold this thing on fairly well um, and might be more accurate because then what what would be good is we could sort of dial it in so I would keep this this piece of channel from actually touching the wall, and.
and that would allow us to have see I baked in maybe 040 a 30 second here but I might have it bonk here against the wall just in this one spot that would allow for a rotation point that we could if you need be could allow this to be slightly adjustable here like that so you could sort of dial this in with just letting this scooch and you know be um, and then this would be kind of where it's touching and you could sort of dial it in but that way instead of having it this far away if somebody bonks against this uh, somebody goes to sit down and they push against it um, it doesn't slide around and then you know causes issues over here um, so I was thinking maybe that could give us a little bit of adjustability in play so that way you know it'll work like that if that makes sense actually our pivot would be over here but either way you get the idea so that gives us a little bit of play here. And instead of double stick tape, which once you set it, it's done, using the friction might allow us to actually, you know, slide this just a little bit left and right as well to try to get this lined up as best as possible. Um, so having just, just this little leg right here that will actually touch the drywall. And that'll, like I say, that'll give us, because uh, we'll have this much play between the frame and the actual 090 return here. So that'll keep somebody from when they get up and down or whatever they're doing, if they bonk against it, um, again, it'll keep it from wanting to slide all the way to the face there. Um, so anyway, but again, how much do we build in here? That's really the only adjustability, how much we're willing to. And like I say, is this truly 73 what's there on site or it's just what it's supposed to be. So all of that needs to be kind of dialed in for sure. Um, or if we're confident that's exactly it, then we will build it. This is 83 right here, as you can see. And, you know, this is this is 73 plus the 090 on each side. But it's, uh, you know, built out. But uh, we build it to that and off we go. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. And uh, so anyway, uh, if you have any questions or please hit me up with clarifications on that.